All right, folks, we are going to begin the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee here. We're one minute behind, I think. So I will invite Mrs. Harris, Mr. Dixit. We have 12 items today, beginning with supplementary instructional materials for students with significant cognitive disabilities. Uh, this is a new contract to provide for supplementary instructional materials for the Office of Special Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with two recommended vendors and contract spending authority of $450,000. All right, do we have questions? Mr. McDaniels. Mr. Stewart, I just wanted to mention that we got a uh, complete presentation in the curriculum meeting last month uh, regarding the educational benefits of this program and the curriculum committee supported moving it forward to the full board. <coughs> Thank you for that context. Okay, we will move forward with our next contract. Staff training. Uh, this is a new contract for which cooperative competitive proposals were solicited to provide training for teachers and support staff for the Office of Special Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and spending authority of $250,000. Questions? No questions on this one. We'll proceed to the next one. Uh, this is LKO 427-18, Robotic Components and Software. This is a new cooperative agreement for robotic components and software for the Department of Innovative Learning. Approval is requested for a three-year, nine-month contract with a two-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $400,000. Remind me, does the 400 also cover the extension? Yes, in this we've instance. included that in this proposed spending authority. Okay. Questions? Ms. Hen. Thank you. Will this contract meet the demand for robotics programs in our schools? Um, well, the, the short answer is it's for, yes, it's for robotics clubs. A lot of Title I schools have programs during the summer that involve these components, as well as our STEM and some CTE programs. So it's, it's a wide range of schools and programs that are covered. So is it sufficient to meet the needs of all schools and programs who desire this equipment to start these clubs? Well, uh, I believe so, unless uh, Ryan has any. We tried to cover everything in sizing the bid. Yes, yeah, so it does meet, there are certain CTE programs at the high school level that do use different robotics programs than this one does. Uh, but they're covered under uh, the Perkins grant and would be, um, would access different funds. Okay. So for our middle school CTE programs, for Lego League Robotics, all those programs are covered under this. And all of those schools expressing interest in starting those programs or clubs are covered in this. Yes, My concern is I want to make sure that we're amply providing for those that are interested in starting these. I know the benefits, they're fantastic programs. I've talked with teachers who say, we, we want this at our schools. So my- We, we want it too. <laughs> so Mrs. Han, what we tried to do is anticipate the needs of the system as well. And if for some reason we realize that we need to adjust that, we would come back to this board to request additional funding if that ever were the case. But um, we feel very confident that the allocation in here would support the needs um, as they stand and as interest continues to grow. This contract does allow schools to, um, to tap into it to purchase the equipment they might need. Great, thank you. Because I would support increasing it if there are schools that need this that are not covered by this. So thank you. Thank you. Our next contract is number four, Summer Enrichment Program. Yes, this is a STEM Summer Enrichment Program, a new contract for which competitive proposals were solicited for two one-week summer STEM enrichment programs for grades five and six students at Woodmore Elementary School and Golden Ring Middle River and Windsor Mill Middle Schools. 
approval is requested for a four-year, two-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $736,000. Remind us how these schools were selected. Uh, it's part of the, this is funded by the Magnet School Assistance Plan Grant, um, and I think uh, either uh, Mr. Embriali or Ms. Schubert could uh, best explain the selection process. Great. Welcome back. Hello again. See, yeah, so the four, the four middle schools that are part of this uh, summer STEM enrichment program are the four middle schools that are a part of the Magnet School Assistance Program grant. And so um, the program that is part of this project, it was written into that federal grant that we received then um, through the application process. That's because those schools have the resources that the grant was looking for or that we wanted to develop or promote? That's correct. And so those schools are able to um, meet the requirements in the federal grant. Right. Ms. Hen. Thank you. And if my math is correct, this would serve approximately 3,200 students. Is that correct? It's 100 students per each site school. each summer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's correct. Yes. Over the, the duration <laughs> of four years. That's correct. At a cost of about just a little over 200 per student. So. Yes, that's correct. Tremendous value. Thank you. Our next contract, number five, thank you, Mr. Ambrali, online courses. Uh, online courses for graduate and MSDE continuing professional development credits. This is a new uh, competitively, competitively bid contract for online courses for graduate and MSDE continuing professional development credits for the Office of Teacher Development. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $780,100. So uh, share with this board why we only received three bids from 28 um, solicitation requests. Um, certainly. Good afternoon. Mr. Stewart, um, very few vendors can offer them um, MSDE credits. It, they, it takes a process to have those courses approved and most vendors won't go through the process because they can only sell them then in Maryland. And so there's a very limited pool of uh, vendors that are willing to do this kind of work for us. So these vendors, I'm assuming, then do work for us and for all the other jurisdictions? Not, not exactly. Most other jurisdictions don't offer this to their um, teachers. We're pretty unique in that, that we offer a way to do CPD credit and graduate credit through an online vendoring service. Most people only go through their local colleges through those agreements, but we offer a little bit more here in Baltimore County. So it makes it all the more unique that these vendors then are willing to go through the hoops? It would seem. Exactly. Good. Ms. Hen? Thank you. Do we know the per credit cost approximately? Debbie, do you know? The, the per credit cost for graduate course code was $300. Yeah. 300 for graduate. And that matches the um, tuition reimbursement that we give as a system. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Other questions? None? Okay. Number six, workers' compensation claims, administration services. This uh, contract for which competitive proposals were solicited will provide for the administration of workers' compensation claims through a third-party administrator for the Office of Human Resources operation, Operations. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option to extend for five years with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2,256,381. And in this case, the contract spending authority is based just on the first five-year term. Uh, we would propose coming back to the board uh, to extend for another five years if we feel that the services have been satisfactory and the pricing remains competitive. So it was bid for 10 years, and we're proposing at this time just five. Okay. Questions? All right, seeing none, we'll go on to number seven. 
Human Resources Financial Management System. So uh, this is our uh, enterprise software system that uh, for which we have a competitive or a cooperative contract modification with Baltimore County government to provide for the continued use of CGI Advantage Financial and Advantage Human Resources software. Approval is requested to increase spending authority by uh, $1,911,000, bringing the revised total contract expending, spending authority uh, for this 15-year period to $20,774,321 with one awarded vendor approved by the board. So this is essentially our primary financial accounting, payroll, procurement, human resources uh, software system. For system-wide personnel. Correct. What's that? Um, this software is hosted on site, I believe. Is that yes. correct? Yes. There is an option to host it in the cloud. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the costs to do that, and um, we're going, at this time, we elected to upgrade the system that we currently have um, in coordination with Baltimore County government who's on the same, who uses the same product. And if we were going to go to the cloud, we'd want to do it in concert with both entities. Um, and as you can see, this, the county's agreement expires in December of 2019. So we expect uh, that we'll be back to ask for an extension, but uh, we'll coordinate with them. So when you say extension, the agreement is for a period of 15 years. Correct. And those are not option years. Those are correct. That's required and included in right. the spending authority. Right. Does that lock us into the hosted version of the software for 15 years? Uh, well, we're, we're locked in through December of 2019. We just were in the process of upgrading the system. Well, it looks like the original point. contract had a five-year term and then 10 subsequent annual renewals, I think, at, at the end of which we could have terminated each. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. So we're not locked in, but at the same time, Only through 19. We've, we've been, the county has invested the $2.9 million for an upgrade, mm -hmm. and so, and at the same time, elected not to pursue an RFP for replacement. So we're moving under the premise that with their recent investment and really not enough time before December of 2019 to replace both of our systems that we expect them to propose an extension and at which point we'll bring that back to the board. For the hosted product Correct. versus the cloud-based. And did I understand it correctly that a cost-benefit analysis was performed on yes. cloud versus hosted? It, it is definitely more expensive. Um, so we would have to base that decision on the ability to either cut costs elsewhere or um, through see the benefit in enhanced services. That, that's something I think the board would be interested, this committee would be interested in seeing prior to an extension coming before us, if that could be made available. Well, as I said, to entering into we're going to take the, year agreement based on how well, technology evolves and. Right, we're going to follow the lead of the okay. funding authority on this one, but we'll share that information. I mean, they did publicly seek, uh, do a request for um, uh, information as a preliminary to doing the RFP, which they elected not to do. Okay. Our so bargaining was, power will be much stronger, too, if yeah. we're united in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For potential other products, both yeah. cloud and on-premise, I yes. imagine. Thank you. Sure. All right, our next contract is number eight, which is automated vehicle location. Yes, this is a 
new cooperative contract agreement for an AVL system for the Office of Transportation. Uh, approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $350,000. Uh, this is for the software system uh, that uh, tracks the GPS signal that is already installed in the hard, it, it, the hardware is already installed in our buses and, and in our white fleet. Um, and this is also a, a contract with which we are cooperating with Baltimore County who actually paid for the installation of the hardware uh, in the equipment, in the buses up front, and uh, they have determined that they want to do this an, for an additional year before they make any longer term commitments on this software. And so that's why we are bringing it just for this year. And this, I guess, has a component that relates to our modernization of our transportation assets and systems. Yes. Right? This is us flushing it's, that out. It's different than the automated routing. Right. It's yes. vehicle location. But an integral yes. part, probably, of that. Yes. Seth? So out of curiosity, since the term was limited to one year, would this be considered a pilot of the automated vehicle location? or? I think that's how county government views agreement? it. They view it as a pilot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Our next contract is number nine, telephone repair supplies and accessories. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide consent to the assignment of this contract from Vology Incorporated to Trifecta Networks LLC. Uh, there is one other uh, award vendor on the original contract approved by the board September 12, 2017. And in this case, Trife Trifecta Networks LLC has acquired the hardware business of Vology Incorporated. And uh, this, uh, this contract provides maintenance of our Verizon phone system, which is uh, which is the footprint of which is shrinking as we move more schools over to end offices to the voice over internet protocol, which is now the majority of our service. Okay. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, number 10. Uh, information technology staffing services. This is a new contract for which competitive bids were solicited to provide skilled programming and technology staffing services for the Department of Information Technology and other offices. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with 58 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $3.5 million. Uh, as you can see, we uh, received bids from 65 uh, vendors, we're recommending that uh, 58 of them be approved as meeting uh, the requirements of the services needed. And um, we, it was a five-year bid with uh, four one-year extensions, and we would be coming back to the board in another year uh, if we wish to exercise the uh, extensions. And how were these services provided beforehand? or at least some of them that uh, were provided? Well, they, they have always been provided. These are contract technicians um, that support our internal regular staff, and it would be a similar arrangement where we would, uh, depending on which vendor has which skills, we would interview and select staff from their uh, workshops. So if this is a similar arrangement than why just a one-year term just to give us the maximum flexibility yes okay it's gauzy thank you thank you hi for the new contract it says that we're moving from 53 approved vendors to 58 recommended bidders um, are there only five that are new only five new vendors 
or did more than five fall off the list? Well, we're not talking about vendors. What I think you're referring to are skill sets. So we've expanded the skill sets that we sought to obtain from 13 to 53. No, in the description it talks about 53 approved vendors and we're moving up to 58 mm -hmm. recommended bidders. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So is it that there's only five new vendors that we'll be using or did more fall off the list than that and more came on the list? More fell off and more came on. Okay, is there, um, can you tell us which ones are new to this contract? Um, I would need to go through and provide, I could provide you a marked list with that. Okay, because one of my um, interests is seeing if we've used them before and if we have used them before, how the results were of the previous contract. I could say the majority of the vendors um, are previous um, companies that we work with. We do evaluate the um, individuals that are working with us as well as we provide um, evaluations of the companies. Okay because I see a number of them are out of state. Okay, so you'll be able to give us that list in a weekly update. Okay, thank you. And, and really just about five? No, I see it. So we're, we're talking about probably maybe 10% are out of state. Okay. Uh, all right, our next contract is number 11. Did you have a question on the former? Okay, Ms. Thank Ann. You. Approximately how many contractors per year do we in bring on in terms of actual of this, individual of individual contractors or in terms of contract hours? What measures? Um, um, do you we'll have, have to get that information and provide it to you. I don't have it. Uh, in I, terms of I can placements. tell you that we that last year our expenditures were about three point one million dollars, um, and that's the basis on which we've we've anticipated the spending for the next year um, but I would have to get you an estimate of the number of hours billed for last year okay and the average annual expenditures are 2.3 so last year they had been prior three. for the previous four years but when we went to size this we we looked at the most recent year because, for instance, the dashboard presentation that you saw is mm -hmm. something that was uh, done uh, largely with the work of some contractors, and so that is the type of project that um, that is ongoing and that we took into consideration here. Okay. Do we have any idea of the number of um, hours that this might represent or that we used last year? I'll have in to terms provide of, that um, to IT you. contract support. I don't have it right okay. at hand. Thank you. Okay, our next contract is number 11. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You want me to do no. it? This is a contract modification to provide temporary lease space for Rosedale Center. To provide a little bit of background, a few years ago, we moved the uh, Victory Villa School to Rosedale, and students from Rosedale were moved to Golden Ring. We had leased a space there, and uh, the contract was for the construction operating and the rental cost, lease cost for that. The original estimate for the construction piece were based on a different site, and when we could not get that site, we quickly moved to a different site, and uh, so the actual cost of construction was more than the estimated cost. This request is for your approval of $788,555, which is the increased project cost. Ms. Causey. Thank you. So could you tell us how many, what was the total construction costs for the build out and approximately how many square feet and then how many students are utilizing that space? The, the total square foot is 30,827 and the total project cost is $3,173.99. I don't have the exact count of students but 
uh, if you allow me to approximate it, it's about 250 students. Okay, so that's a expensive build out for 250 students. How many years have they been using it and how many years are they projected to still use that facility? The, the facility has been extremely useful to us and the, the, it's not expensive, about $100 a square foot for a build out cost from a shell, starting from a shell, is a very reasonable amount. And it's a modern facility for those students, much better than what they had before. And the lease is for five years, I believe. And it's, the advantage is not only in the lease and the modern space, but since we moved the students out of Victory Villa, and now we'll be using it again as holding a school for the, another, for the next project, for a total of two to three years uh, of construction in a vacant building, there's some cost savings there. So it has been one of the very successful project in terms of completion and in terms of cost effectiveness. Okay, thank you. All right, our next contract is number 12, moving services modification. And this is another consent to assign the contract from Sudoth Relocation Systems of Maryland to Hildrup Companies Incorporated. There are five other award bidders on the original contract approved by the board June 13th, 2017. Uh, this is the result of a corporate acquisition. There's no change in spending authority and uh, no expenditures have been recorded to date, although I expect this summer there will be some. Okay, questions? All right, seeing none, I will ask for a motion to approve items M1 through M12, uh, recommendation to the full board for their approval. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Great, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? I'm going to just abstain since I missed some of the discussion. Uh, Ms. Collier, to clarify, are you abstaining from all or some? It'll be easier that way. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Ms. Collier abstains. Uh, with that, that concludes the work of the Building Contracts Committee. Thank you.